My name is Robin Hudson, and I reside in Westchester County. I joined Less Is More now two years. And uh, Less Is More is a very serious act that is much needed here in the state of New York. And I'm going to pass it on to Melanie to introduce herself, then we'll get into details. Okay, so, thank you. And so my name is Melanie. I am the senior community organizer with the Catal Center for Equity, Health and Justice. And, um, and I've been working with Catal for about two years now. And just to kind of give y'all an understanding of who we are, we first launched Catal back in 2016. And actually this month marks our six year anniversary. So that's incredible. And, um, and we are a community organization that works both in New York and Connecticut. And we focus on strengthening the people, policies, institutions, and movements that advance equity, health, and justice for everyone. And we actually have three interrelated goals. So the first one is ending mass criminalization, mass incarceration, and the war on drugs. The second one is advancing evidence-based solutions that promote equity, health, and justice. And then the third one is the one that I hold really close to my heart, and it's what really brought me to Catal, is uh, building the leadership and organizing capacity of neighborhood residents, as well as organizers, advocates, and community groups to effectively drive and shape real change. Um, and so just to like, like we all know that power comes in twofold. So it comes in organized people and organized money. And we all know that organized people will always beat out organized money. And so that's how like as community organizers, it's so, so important to build that community power, build that people power. And that's what I'm all about. Um, I have had like such a strong sense of community just from like my family, um, they immigrated from Ecuador to New York, to New York City. Um, and they were like, you know, there's so many challenges that come with that. Like you come into a new, a new country, you don't know the language, you don't have your family nearby. And so you, what you get out of it is such a strong sense of community. And so I've just had that ingrained in me from like such a young age and I show up for my community. And so that's kind of like what we've always been doing here at Qatar. And, um, and that's just a little bit about us. Interesting. I, can I ask you a quick question? Do you yeah. have Do you have any aspirations to go into politics? Because I think that would be important as a next step. No, I definitely hear that, and I don't. I personally don't have aspirations to go into politics. I'm like here in it for like community organizing because you you really have to understand how powerful community organizing is. Because when you're in politics, you're still working within the system, right? When you're in community organizing, you're outside of it and you don't have that that sense of like, OK, you have to work with the system. No, you're holding the system accountable. And so there's like a difference to it. And and I that's just like what I like. I like to hold the system accountable. And that's politicians like it's that you, you see it like a lot. Many politicians sure. get elected and they're for the people at the beginning, but then they change throughout right. it all. And that's where like or um, community organizing groups are so important because they hold them accountable. They're like, nope, you cannot do that. You need to be doing what your constituents want, what the community wants. And that's, um, that's how you create change. I, I agree. I actually agree. Mm -hmm. You know, unless we had a school for statesmen and we actually paid those statesmen accordingly and didn't have lobbyists and didn't have money at the root of everyone's yep. behavior, uh, they can't do what you're doing at the community level. Absolutely. Uh, and it's very important. Robin, would you like to speak, please, and tell us about yes. your, your entry? Well, my, I learned about Cattell Center because I was working on a project of my own. I'm trying to open up a halfway house for the returning citizens that they don't have to come out of corrections and go into the shelters. And, you know, the whole struggle is trying to give them a chance. And when I found out about Cattell, I decided that that is a movement that I really wanted to be a part of. And it's dear to my heart because I have family members and friends that are on parole, you know? And the parole system is so outdated that it doesn't fit today's society. Not only does it not fit, it's inhumane. Mm -hmm. You know, the stigmas in it are bad. Everything about it 
needs to be corrected and changed, that it fits society. It's supposed to be a supervision, not a control. And it's like they're using it to control them, to keep them locked into the misery that they already did time for. And there's no excuse. Well, perhaps, Melanie, then you would explain uh, why we supported the less is more uh, legislation and really go into a little bit of depth about what Robin was talking about, about how parolees do indeed suffer. Yeah, so absolutely. Why was yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I did want to piggyback off a little bit of on what Robin was saying, how, you know, they're working on their own project to bring a, a home to people that are returning back into the community. That's like perfect conditions that it's much, much better. And it's like deemed for a human, right? Um, yes, there's right. A, with less is more, or like just in general, like New York State has been spending nearly $680 million incarcerating people for these technical parole violations like being late for curfew, like testing positive for alcohol. And so, you know, that money is being wasted right now. And I'm thinking like that money could be better spent in other things like providing housing, providing job initiatives for folks that are coming back into the community and funding programs like um, what Robin is trying to bring out in, in her community. And so that's just like really, really important. And I did also wanna just bring a number like in 2019, of the people who were sent back to prison in New York State, 85 percent of them were sent back for a technical parole violation. And so, you know, it like Robin was saying, it's become such a punitive system that instead of actually meeting people where they're at, assisting them in their needs, there's just like they're just so quick to send them back to prison um, for these minor infractions. And uh, and so like less is more what it's looking to do is trying to address this problem that has long been overlooked. And so um, we've been working on this campaign alongside our coalition partners, which are Unchained and A Little Piece of Light since 2018. And so um, and then even more like I do want to uplift all the other groups and individuals that have been working tirelessly to, tirelessly to ensure that the success of this campaign, including Rack New York, like you said, Joyce, and then including a bunch of others, right? So just to kind of like frame it a little bit and provide more context, like the way we came into the Less Is More fight um, at Catal was through one of our founding campaigns, which was the, the Close Rikers campaign. Right, this which called for the immediate closure of Rikers Island due to the inhumane conditions found there. We all know that last year, about 16 people passed away at Rikers Island um, due to the horrible conditions there, due to the fact that there's no proper protocol to keep people safe during the pandemic. And so, you know, that fight has been ongoing. Um, and then back in 2017, um, then Mayor de Blasio, he committed to closing down Rikers Island, which was a huge win for the community. However, um, yeah. we knew that there wasn't, it wasn't just up to the city to ensure the closure of Rikers Island, but that there was stuff and reform needed at the state level in order to reduce the number of people that are incarcerated um, there. And so and there was also a report that came out by the Littman Commission that also like specify and outline like the proper steps needed to close down Rikers Island. And like I mentioned, this is reducing the number of people incarcerated there. And so, you know, that's how we went into it. And then one thing that stood out to us um, in the fight, in the Close Rikers campaign, was the number of people that were being held behind bars for a technical parole violation. And so, you know, this is how like we, we worked on less is more. Um, the bill was introduced in 2018 and, and it addresses uh, some of the problems, a bunch of the problems that we have with the parole system, which Robin highlighted, right? And like the yes. first provision, yeah, the first provision is restricting the use of incarceration for non-criminal technical parole violations. And like I mentioned earlier, this is like testing positive for alcohol, um, or any other substance use, being late for curfew, um, failing to pay fees and surcharges that the parole um, puts on individuals, or you know, missing it, a, a program that they were mandated to attend, things like that, right? Things of that nature. And then um, the other provision is that it bolsters due process. And so rather than an individual being automatically detained in local jails, 
people who have been accused of a non-criminal technical parole violation will now be issued a written notice of the violation with the date to appear in court. And so, right. like I mentioned, like the way that it's been functioning in New York City is that they're automatically detained on an alleged violation. This like uproots their entire lives. And so it's completely destructive to like that person and their family. And then, um, and then another aspect of this provision is that the hearings will now be held in community rather than in jails, which is what's been happening right now. And this would further improve transparency and accountability because if you hold these hearings in the community, it's a lot more accessible for their family members, for witnesses, for their lawyers, everything to like be present, right? And the community as well. Um, and so another part is that Another provision is that it requires speedy hearings. And so people who are under community supervision will be afforded a speedy adjudicatory hearing upon an alleged violation of their conditions of release. Hearings for people on parole who are in the community will be completed within 55 days. And hearings for people who are detained will be completed within 35 days rather than taking up to 105 days, which has been the case today. That's a lot of time that people are just um, either behind bars or and not being not having access to their their hearings. And we know that a lot of the times, once they actually go to their parole revocation hearings, they are sent back into the community, so they're found not guilty. And it's like now they wasted that whole time behind bars, so, where they could have been in the community working, right? And so another big one that that really resonates with a lot of folks on parole is the good time credits. So for most people on parole, they will be eligible to earn a 30 day credit reduction on their overall parole time sentence for every 30 days that they spend in the community without any violations. And so right. we've, seen, um, we've seen these types of provisions be applied in other states and it lowers the recidivism rate. It makes the parole system a more incentivized system rather than punitive because now people are not parole and they're gonna do good. They're gonna do better because they know that ultimately like they'll get out. Whereas like right now, like Robin was saying, like people are walking on eggshells it's really, really hard. Like some people have been incarcerated because they weren't, they were late for their curfew because they got out of their jobs late or because they missed the train or the bus. And so it's horrifying. And so this-, this Or even is, changing their addresses too, Melanie. Oh yes, that's absolutely- That's a big right. one. Now, I, I, I have a couple of questions. One is what happens when a man, you know, when any person, is on parole, are they given money of any kind so that they can establish a life or are they given uh, job interviews or are they just let out and it's like, fend for yourself, which is leads us to the halfway house. What mm -hmm. does occur? Well, actually, if they get released back to their families or shelters the shelter tries to put them in programs but they are limited there's limited programs programs won't take uh violent offenders if a person has violent offenses they can't go into these programs that are structuralized so that they can get a job and they can get their own place within a period of time they they don't get the parole when they're paroled it's like basically fend for yourself if they are mm -hmm. able to get into those programs and they don't have violent crimes, they do well. But the people who can't get into it, it's not much for them to do. It puts them in a state of depression. This is where the mental illness side comes in. But if you have a house, a halfway house, like halfway houses usually have structure. They have programs, they have meetings, they have outside um, agencies that assist with the betterment of the returning citizen. They also help them do job search. They help them get their driver's license. You know, they help them get services like social services and stuff. Because yes, when they do come out, they get $40 bus ticket. That's it. They don't give them any income. So where are we now, Melanie? We, we know Kathy Hochul, Governor Hochul passed the law or less is more. We also know it's being held up in committee, mm -hmm. uh, judicial committee. What what are the yeah. next steps? Absolutely, Joyce. And 
So basically, less is more. It, it, it's not being held up in any committee, actually, because back uh, in last year, it actually made it out of legislative session. Oh. Now, like you mentioned, um, Governor Kathy Hochul, she did sign the legislation back in September of last year. However, um, the bill, is, the effective date of the bill is set for March 1st of this year. So that's next week, right? Um, but, you know, and, and then on that effective date, almost every provision on less is more will be implemented with the exception of for the of the re recalculation of time assessments and the provision of the earned time credits that I was mentioning earlier. Those are said to be implemented until late summer and early fall. Um, but like we, as we all know, like we are pushing that to be implemented immediately. We, there's no time to waste. And I forgot to mention, but there's a provision in the bill that gives the governor full power on, on implementing the bill right now or like like fully implementing the bill fully. And so that's kind of like what we've been pushing for. And we actually have an online action too that people can take from home and share with their loved ones. And um and I know Robin, you were gonna get into that later on, but but we we'd be happy to share it right now. Yeah, and maybe if you have uh, uh yeah, I don't know where we put it, if you have a PowerPoint or something that you'd like to give us or put it. Uh, do we put it in the chat? That well, it's we actually a link. Things afterwards. It's a link that we can put into the chat. Yes, what it is is you can you can involve you could be involved on our efforts to make sure the implementation of less is more goes swiftly by reaching out to our campaign website. Our campaign, our website is www.lessismorenewyork.org. You can find find any upcoming events. You can sign to volunteer. You can donate. Mm -hmm. You can help us build less is more to where it needs to be. And the only way we can do that is by everyone reaching out and participating with this campaign. Well, I remember so, Melanie saying to me that she wanted me to host uh, a party. <laughs> Uh, right. In, in, and I said I would do so in April, uh, yeah. if, uh, assuming nothing happens prior to that. Uh, yeah, the end of March, beginning of April, April uh, to host a party, uh, a Zoom party, where we can get people involved and have the two of you speak, and perhaps some parolees as well, right. uh, to talk about how dreadful the system is and what effects it's had on people. Yes, yes, and that would be amazing. That would absolutely be amazing. Um, the Less is More campaign, it's a positive thing. I'm proud to be a part of it. I rallied with them in the campaign outside of uh, the government's the governor's office and we had a very good turnout i mean there were people riding up i recall one time a young man pulled up and he was like can i can i come out there and help y'all i said sure so he drove away and like 20 minutes later i seen him come he also made his own sign i was like wow this is really <laughs> nice really <laughs> nice because it's real and people don't know about it so they can't support it but the media is is manipulating the whole thing by saying all these crimes are happening with the because of the less is more bill, which is not true because people that no. are are qualified for the less is more are already free. They're not in prison and they're not um, running around committing crimes. These people want betterment, and mm -hmm. that's what the less is more campaign is to do to give them a betterment and let them come back into society with acceptance. So Absolutely. it sounds like we need to be able to get to the press to write op-eds of some sort. That's a big one. Yeah, that's always yeah. a big one to continue right. to educate the, the press, but also the community. So if yeah. people who are watching this, if you're interested in um, doing an op-ed or you're interested in doing a less is more New York house party like Joyce and Robin were talking about, you can reach out to us. We're super accessible. Uh, my email is melanie at katalcenter.org. 
Um, and then I did want to just add a little bit more to what Robin was saying about the pushback. There has been a lot of pushback on less is more. And this pushback has come from Republican legislators, from the in public, from the Public Employees Federation and a few others, where they have been spreading misinformation on what the bill does and telling the community that is a threat to public safety. But there is absolutely no evidence that reincarcerating people for these minor infractions of parole improves public safety. In fact, it actually hurts public safety because you're st you're destabilizing individuals on parole, their families and their communities. And so sending them back to prison um, and detaining them for the duration, like I mentioned earlier, like sets them back, like they might lose their jobs, they might lose their housing. And so once they're released, the one thing that I tell people is like, how do you expect them to not be mad about this? And um, and then how do you expect them to like, to start all over and, and this leaves again, this leaves many on parole even more vulnerable to homelessness and unemployment and these conditions that make it more likely that they will be rearrested for crimes of poverty. And so um, we really need to take that into consideration and just continue to debunk the misinformation that's being put out there, the fear mongering. And we do this by continuing to inform our communities about the impact of less is more and what it actually does. So. Absolutely. Is there, I, I'm sorry, is there, a, a, are there specific communities that you're working with? Is it all over the state or? Yeah, or it is. So because the, because the legislation is a, is a state camp, you know, statewide campaign, we've been working with people all across New York state. So there's no limitations to it. Like anybody can come and help out and then, um, and then just learn about the bill. I, okay, and then learning about it, trying to to take it to your congressman, so they stop absolutely the stop the disinformation that may be going on because that is so hurtful and so culturally divisive. Mm -hmm. And really, it's not a, our objective to support prisons; it's our objective to support people who want to be decent citizens. Exactly, and, and, I love the way you put that, Joyce. Right, and reclaim yes. them into society, mm -hmm. you know, okay. so that you have a, a good family structure, uh, you know, something where everyone really is brought up by this family structure. Right, and I think that's so important. That's why. I, that's why I think your work is so important. Thank you. you know, it's thank you. It's, it's good for people. Uh, are there any events besides the uh, the op eds and uh, you know having Zoom parties with your community? Uh, any other events you might want to speak about? We so we have less is more New York campaign update calls, and we do them monthly. The next one we haven't determined the date, but it is coming in March. And so, like I said, like if people want to plug into that event, go to our campaign um, website, which is lessismoreny.org and you'll see everything there. You'll see like upcoming events, our online action tools. You can even find some resources like our fact sheets on Less Is More to learn a little bit more um, and all that good stuff. So that definitely plug into that website. Okay. And what, well, I guess, what is the measurement of success? What would you consider the measurement of your success with this program? Yeah, that's a good question. I actually, that's something that that we we constantly talk about because you know a measurement of success it, to be put like simply put would be like okay, getting less is more sign and and actually getting less is more to the finish line. That's really really important. But you have to understand like the way that we go about organizing at Catal. So we envision a world where all communities have the resource and power to exercise self-determination and participate meaningfully in the democratic process. And so we use campaigns to build leadership, right? Um, we have Robin who um, has like managed to uh, create different types of rallies on Less Is More. Robin is out here speaking about Less Is More and a bunch of our other members and just community members have uh, met with their legislators on the bill. So that type of stuff is really hard to measure, but that's what like our success is, just knowing that 
community members can be lied to and that now they, they've come out of this campaign with an understanding of how, the, how campaigns work, what the legislative process is, what do you do afterwards to make sure to protect a bill once it's been um it's been signed into law? Because there's so much to right. it. Or like even just what you were saying, Joyce, like meeting with their elected officials to hold them accountable um, is a big one. And so all of that is hard to measure, but that's kind of like how we see success at Qatar. Right. And well, because it's complex. It's a mm -hmm. complex system. <laughs> it's probably made deliberately so. Uh, so that there are many steps between uh, proposing legislation, seeing the right. legislation through all the yes. committees, and then seeing it signed off as a real law, and then finally getting it to the finish line, as you, you said, mm -hmm. uh, to see it implemented where people yeah. are indeed given uh, the the days that they're entitled to uh to be off of uh out of prison and on parole uh because we're now speaking so if the law goes in mark goes into effect in march okay whoever is ready for parole in march they're out but those folks who still have six or nine months they could be out in less time but if you don't implement that piece of the uh, legislation, uh, they're going to be serving the full sentence. Exactly, exactly. So, right. So this is definitely, actually what you're both doing is so worthwhile and I'm very proud to be able to contribute. I mean, this we is honestly, we we appreciate you putting us on your platform. This is this is a great opportunity. Thank you. And you put it on. Uh, I'll give you the finished product as well, and you're able to use it also. And Absolutely. It, it's good for all of us yes. uh, because that's what we want. We want community involvement, informed citizens. Absolutely and people who can understand the system and make good decisions for themselves when they vote. And the understanding that, yes, we do have power, voting does work, and if you vote for the right people, you know. And hold them accountable too, yep. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Joyce. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, we have power. <laughs> we do. Yes, we have power, power in the vote. We have power oh, in our vote. vote. And yes. uh, we need to be able to control the narrative. Yes. There are too Absolutely. many people. Yeah, there are too many people who would like to have disinformation and, and, and really uh, create uh, chaos when none is necessary. This is a humane project. Yeah. Thank so, you, yeah. Joyce. Thank you so much again for having us. And you said it, you put it all beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's my pleasure. So it, it was a delight to have you both on. And uh, let's, I wish us all the best. <laughs> and all those, <laughs> and all those parolees. <laughs> yes that we want to see helped and yes. have, have and have decent lives. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs>